I think I fixed the Fast and Furious series, mostly because I watched the Fast X series trailer thing with Jason Momoa, and I'm just a little bit confused because Jason Momoa seems to be putting a bomb in the Vatican. What? The Vatican? Wow, you guys are going to hell. Nothing makes sense anymore. And then I realized nothing has made sense, like since the third movie. Dream. What do you mean, Drew? So, I'm going to fix it, okay? I'm Alex, Alex Amartini with two underscores on Instagram, and I would argue that this series brought a lot of people together in the scene and now has me given big boomer energy because nothing feels right about it, okay? So please don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you think below. And if you're looking to do something extra this weekend or this week while you're watching this video, go check out Martini Works. It's our brand new company that we launched. We're making build threads great again. So if you have a cool car, go add to the build threads. It would mean a lot to me. Anyway, let's get into this, okay? So the structure of this video is gonna be pretty easy. One, what the hell is the current plot? Then why is it dumb in this format? What are the similarities in the movies? And then how do we how do we fix it? Where's the problems residing? So Fast and Furious 1 is about tech and theft. Fast and Furious 2, it's a local drug dealer bust. Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, probably one of my favorite movies because then we just got the bad guy with the, the good girl. The fourth one then has a bad Mexican drug dealer bad guy, not bad. You know what I mean? I'm trying not to get demonetized. I'm saying what the plot is about, not about what- Fast Five. We go from having a bad Mexican drug dealer, I think, to having a bad Brazilian drug dealer. Um, okay. Then in Fast Six, we get a bad tech guy. The MacGuffins are expanding from drugs to things that blow up. Fast and Furious 7 has a really bad tech guy. Bad, bad technology guy. Big, bad, artificial chat GPT bad guy. Fast 8, bad, really bad tech girl. Really getting diversified in our baddies. And then Fast 9, we have a really bad guy brother. And then Fast 10 is a really bad friend of Brazilian drug guy from Fast 5. Are you following? Because that's the entire hierarchy of the bad guys in the Fast and Furious series. Okay, let me tell you why it's dumb in this format. Because you may just get upset about the fact that it doesn't have street racing anymore, but I would consider myself an automotive and movie connoisseur. Anyway, <clears throat> why are all the bad guys Central American? That's not something I wanna call out. It's not something I wanna talk about. I'm just wondering, do we just really enjoy Central American vibes and everybody just seems to be a bad guy? I don't know. Let's get into fixing this thing. We gotta get rid of the similarities that seem to be in every single movie. It's causing the repetition and it's causing people to get bored. Number one, Coronas. It's time to get a new beverage in, in, in the space. We need to get Dom to wear sleeves. This would be a really great change up to the early 2000s. It's been 22 years. Maybe we could do something there. Letty needs to stop yelling at Dom. In my revised structure of the story, she don't make it. Then, how's the bad guy always the good guy in the next movie? Then, we gotta do something about the fact that ever since the fourth one, there's always something rolling. In the Fast Furious 4, tankers rolling. Fast 5, they have a, a vault rolling. Fast and Furious 6, let me think about it. Something is rolling in Fast 6. I'll put it here because something is rolling in Fast 6. Fast and Furious 7 has, is it the train rolling? Is it, no, that's got the freaking the hall that rolls and it's got Paul Walker fighting off Tony Ja, which Tony Ja would have kicked his ass. But anyway, that's besides the point. Then in Fast 8, you have the train rolling, right? I think. And then Fast 9 has a, has a big train rolling again. And then in Fast 10, there's a bomb rolling down Vatican. There's a lot of rolling, a lot of hills in this that we got to figure out. No more hills. Anyway, let's fix the series. Starting off with Fast and Furious 1. Perfect. No changes need to be made to that movie. I loved it. I love everything about it. I love its corniness. I love all of it. Because you gotta remember, I'm gonna change this, like the plot. I'm not really gonna change the scenes. We of course want more racing, but I'm gonna try and say we have to keep it close to what the scenes already are. Now, Fast and Furious 2. This is where I'd introduce Dom running away from the cops at the end of the movie, right towards the end, right? I'd have like a Challenger, Charger, Paul Walker's got money, strapped to him, so does Tyrese Gibson. But then a low panning shot to some feet. You know, boom, 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 on the beach, grabs a suitcase, look up, it's the white beater, it's the gold chain, it is Vin Diesel grabbing a stack of cash because guess what? Motive, all right? He's still a guy that steals, but he needs the money for something. Boom! We've got connectivity, okay? Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift is not further down the line. It is 
brought into the actual timeline as to when it was released. Here's, here's what we got going on. It's mostly perfect, I like it. But instead of it being a time jump, Dom is running from the cops. He goes to Japan to try and meet Han. He wants to meet Han because he needs his help on a job. Now, the fourth Fast and Furious movie starts in Japan, not in Central America, okay? Dom is devastated at the beginning of the movie that Han is dead. Cops are chasing him, okay? He's, they're chasing him in Japan. Dom has to, like, rip out of Japan in Han's finished Sylvia, calling back Tokyo Drift's car at the beginning of the movie. Okay, we're good with that. He barely makes it to Central America, where his boys, Don Omar, come and save his life. Boom! Introduction to new characters where it makes sense. They tell him he's got a job, it's a tanker heist, boom, Fast and Furious 4 starts and Letty re-enters the game the moment that she realizes that Dom is in Central America. By the end of it, Dom is angry, right? Because Letty is dead. She's staying dead in this new version. But now, Dom is angry and he's a changed man. Letty's death ruins his outlook on family. And on top of that, Braga dying and Giselle running away causes the Central American crime lord in the fifth movie to learn about Mr. Family Man. Boom, Fast Five starts. There's only a few things I'd change about this one because now we're getting into the cast getting really big. Okay, so now that we're into Fast Five, Letty's dead, we need to stop bringing people back. The bad guy, Hernan Reyes, learns about Don being in Central America, causing Vince to die right at the beginning, right? Bad guy kills good guy, Dom finds out. He's already mad, but now, Dom is pissed. Dom wants retribution for Letty and Vince's death. Cobb joins up at the end because he has to, not because he wants to. Everything starts to get together. Then Hobbs tries to actually get Dom. Dom runs away because he knows he's not doing the right thing. And that kind of spins off this weird, ah, I don't like it. They don't like each other, but they have to put up with each other, right? Okay, good. Dom's still angry. People are dead because that's the point of real risk. You're adding on more characters. Still following because we're into Fast 6. Luke Hobbs reluctantly uses Dom to get things done. And the family gang feels Dom is going a little overboard. They're trying to save him. They're trying to bring him back. So with Letty dead, Dom needs a new motive, and that motive is a kidnap. Brian's baby gets stolen for some reason because people want kids, and it's because the bad guy is angry that he lost money from Fast Five, not because of the MacGuffin. The money from Fast Five is the motive for Fast Six, which causes the kidnapping of Brian's son. But Brian is a good guy, a family man. Dom is a good guy, not very family man right now. You hearing me? Two protagonists, two different reasons for wanting to get Brian's kid back. At the end of the movie, Brian has the baby back, and this is where the movies should have ended. Period. Done. We're all good. Everything is closed. Now, we have to continue the series because this is not where it ends because there's three more goddamn movies for some reason. This is where they connect Han's death. I'm thinking we need to get rid of that entire concept. Also, Han is already dead. Okay, on top of that, Ludacris needs to die. This is gonna cause the spiral into Fast 7, okay? And Fast 7 with Ludacris, Letty, and Jesse comes back from the first one, which is what we all want. We all would love to see it. I love that boy, he needs to come back. So why did Luda die in the previous movie to Jason Statham? Because even though the baddie was his brother, the MacGuffin and the money was supposed to go to a batter guy. And if Jason doesn't get it back, the antagonist in Fast 7, he dies. Ending, perfect. Fast 8, we're deleting it completely. I'm not even trying to fix that. Now, Fast 9 intro is the final bad guy. Finally, there's this massive target on Family Man's forehead, which introduces the final movie. Not Charlize Theron, not Jason Momoa, but Michael Fassbender. He's the final bad guy. Not just because he's a great actor, but he's actually a really good driver. The gang teams up for the final actual ride, where Dom is a dick because all his friends are dead, and by the end of the movie, he's saved by his team versus himself with a crowbar. We gotta stop with the crowbar stuff. That It's gotta end, okay? We, we gotta chill with the crowbars. There's a good character arc for a man who went from nothing to everything, then lost everyone, and then came back to the people that care about him the whole time. Now, because of that, we lose Tyrese in the final movie because he doesn't get along with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This is a known thing. But it's what motivates Dom to beat Michael Fassbender while they're on the Nurburgring running away from an explosion. The baddest of the bad, over. 
the team wins, barely. Everybody's happy because I'm not really sure what Fast 10 is, but to fix it, um, I would say the submarine dude in the fourth Jeep from Fast 8 is actually gonna be the third cousin of Charlize Theron. And in Fast 11, he's gonna find Kong in the center of the earth and release him in New York unless Dom grabs a bat and yells family as he drops into the hole that Kong is coming out of and Letty is yelling Dom. You think I'm joking, but that's probably more realistic than what you would think. Anyway, maybe not. I don't think Fast 10 should really exist either, but if I had to, it would be because after Fast 9 and the team saving the world, every single enforcement agency wants them detained. If you want to expand into action, in top of racing, on top of bringing this entire huge cast together, you have to bring some emotions into the fright. That is why Fast 7 was such a good, like it was such a good closure for something and someone that meant a lot to a lot of people. The ending was glorious. It was such a great thing to do. And then Fast 8 was a spit in my face, disgusting attempt to try and continue to bring this series together. I understand why they did it, because at the end of the day, money's money. I totally understand. But you have to find a way to grow a series with the audience that's watching it. You have to try and keep it connected to some form of reality because as the movies get more and more intense, the only place you're gonna end up finding these movies is gonna be on the back of one of those headrests on an airplane when you're heading from Delta from Appleton to Los Angeles. And you're gonna look at it and you're gonna say to yourself, do I really wanna watch this movie or should I just go and watch another episode of Peaky Blinders? Because honestly, that's where it seems to be getting to. Now, I love what this movie did for the automotive industry, but God damn it, can we get a little authenticity in the series? Let me know below. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram, and we will see you later. Adios. Hey!